Hey everybody, Will Brink here, BrinkZone.com. Uh, today is a video in my series of audio equipment reviews. So for those of you who are interested in audio equipment, this is a follow-up to uh, last one on the digital streamer, audio streamers that I've been sort of um, auditioning. Um, not really intentionally. I, I sort of started off on this odd um, journey. I say it wasn't my intention to go through a bunch of uh, music streamers, but it just ended up that way. So I originally started off, my first foray into streaming was using a Marantz uh, NA6006. Um, good machine. I was very happy with it. No complaints for the money. Um, and I'll, I'll link um, my reviews of the various streamers underneath. So what ended up happening was I also ended up updating my uh, amplifier, ended up getting a, an Anthem uh, STR integrated, which has a, an excellent DAC in it. And so I decided that I wanted to use the DAC uh, in the STR. And so instead of key, so what ended up happening with the Morans is I was just bypassing the DAC and just using it as a, as a bridge streamer uh, as they call it. And so I decided, you know, instead of doing that, why don't I go find a dedicated uh, bridge streamer? Um, so that was sort of what got me going. So the, the first one uh, that I tried, actually the very first one is um, one of these guys. And this is a, um, just a uh, Raspberry Pi. Sorry, I'm looking at the screen. So basically, the very first one I tried was this little Raspberry Pi, and I put this in a little little aluminum box here, and um, had to upload the uh, operating system and get it all squared away. Uh, and you know, these guys work; they work fine. I mean, no complaints. I, you know, I I thought it sound sound wise seemed a little rough around the edges to me, but. Uh, I, I was still more interested in dedicated streamers. And I will say that if you're not um, inclined to to doing such things, um, uploading operating systems and getting this thing all hooked up, honestly, was was kind of a pain. Uh, I won't lie. So it really depends on, you know, on you. But so this was, I just but I wanted to try it. I wanted to see I kept reading about this. This is under one hundred dollars. So if you have a, a DAC um, and you want, just want to stream music to it through um, Amazon or Tidal or Quobuzz or whatever, you can do that literally through one of these little guys and for basically under $100. Now, I wanted to go on to something that was uh, definitely a bit more high-end, uh, higher quality, um, higher build quality, and so forth. And so that led me to uh, a German company that I, I did – uh, a review of, I'll link that underneath. A uh, nice little streamer, but something about it, I just, just didn't agree with my taste. I thought it sounded very lean and so did um, so did somebody else um, who sort of didn't like it even more than I didn't like it. So it ended up leaving the house. Um, some people love it. It was, I, I really didn't have a negative, uh, a negative review of it. It was just that I didn't think it meshed particularly well with my setup and you can go look at that. Um, after that was uh, another unit from Britain, a British company, which again, I will link underneath. Uh, I really liked that unit. It sounded great. Um, and I thought in the build quality and the engineering of it uh, for the price, it was not inexpensive, but it was not terribly expensive. However, uh, I could not get it to work with my Wi-Fi. Uh, now, for me, that's an issue because where my system is set up, I do not have, I cannot run uh, a cable, you know, 25, 30 feet across the living room to the system. So I have to work with Wi-Fi. And uh, I ended up having to return the unit, and it turned out that the unit did have a faulty Wi-Fi chip in it, and the owner basically conveyed to me that they probably weren't going to be making any more units of that type. So um, I didn't end up actually ending up with another one of those units. So that's what happened to that. And that was another uh, review. But I, I thought it was great. I mean, it sounded great. And you can check out that review underneath. So on to where I am now. Um, I ended up trying a Magna um, Ultra MK2 music streamer. And the Magna is a, is a very uh, a serious bit of kit, as they would say. I guess they would say in the, in the UK. Again, you'll notice uh, if there's a theme here that I keep ending up with European 
companies. Um, it just seems, uh, as I've said in other videos, that the uh, the European companies just seem much more in tune with the uh, the concept of, of these bridge streamers because separate DACs are very common these days. They're very popular. People want to have, you know, control their own DACs. And yet there doesn't seem a lot of companies that are making uh, higher end uh, streamers so or bridge streamers where you can connect it to the DAC. And so I keep finding them. The ones that are recommended to me are the ones I keep finding are, uh, are European. So the, the Mano... Uh, is a uh, is not inexpensive. It's about a grand US ish, give or take. Uh, but if you compare it to other higher end streamers from other companies out there, uh, it's it's not even half of what you know you could easily pay. So as always, it's somewhat relative. I will say that for what it costs, the the building quality of it, the build quality of the engineering, the look of it is really outstanding. I mean, it's really hard to. Uh, uh, and, you know, you saw the, the video coming in. There's a couple interior pictures there um, that you can that you saw. I will also link, of course, the, the company underneath. A um, couple of things I really liked about it. Um, it was it's very configurable. You can decide on uh, what you want for for outputs. Uh, I actually ended up going with the um, these balanced XLR guys from um, Benchmark. This is a Benchmark cable. Uh, this is a digital spit of 110 ohm cable. That's what I ended up with. But one of the unique things about you can also do uh, RCA SPDIF, but they also offer um, the I2 squared um, setup, which I don't have that input on my uh, Anthem STR. But if you have, the, and I think more companies are are uh, offering the I2 squared, um, you know, you'd have to go read up on it. Some some people think it is a superior method. Uh, some people will tell you there really is no difference. And if, if anything, I've even seen some measurements where it might even be measured at least, you know, objectively, uh, even uh, not as well as um, typical RCA. So you have a number of configurations uh, that you can do with this. Of course, power version, because whether you're going to Europe, um, whether you want a Wi-Fi uh, uh ability or not you can order i order it with it because as i said i have to have one now i'm running it as a rune uh, endpoint and the rune core is on my is on my computer uh i think and i'm also using uh Cobuzz as uh, as a streaming company now if some of those terms are a little confusing to people um you're not alone uh, actually it took me a while to go and I kept turning about rune and I'm like, what is up with this rune? Why is everybody on rune? And why can't I just uh, do it, do it the, the way I was doing it with my other, you know, with my basic Morantz? Well, you know, that's, that's why we have to go learn these things. Um, and rune is definitely, um, I, I can see why it's so popular. Uh, you have to go look into what rune does and how it does it uh, and the way it allows you to stream music and you can put, you can put uh, rune endpoints on a variety of, uh, on your phone in a variety of areas uh, and just the way it's set up it, it really is um it, it really is works really well and i have to say i'm i'm a, I'm a fan now of rune so the what else can i say about the man the man streamer um there is a bunch of like i say there's a bunch of tech it does have for example it has a dedicated uh class a linear power supply internally now, again, some people really feel that that type of power supply is reduces the noise floor uh, and reduces uh, noise that get, can get into the, the digital streaming. Um, you know, I honestly don't know if that's true. I'm not a tech guy, to be honest with you. Um, I do know a lot of people that own DACs and, and other digital equipment often end up spending money anyway to get linear power supplies. And subjectively, a lot of people feel that they... Uh, are a big benefit. Um, audibly speaking, I'm not going to get into the um, the the subjective versus objective debate here uh, on audio. Uh, I will say that as I have it set up, uh, going through Rune, uh, it sounds fabulous. Uh, I, I think this is the end of my journey looking for um, looking for a, a bridge streamer to finally complete my my system. Uh, and so I'll probably end up um, either using the Marantz, which I was just using as a bridge streamer anyway, uh, either in another system or I'll just end up selling it. Um, 
So you can configure, uh, you know, like say all the tech uh, and all that of this unit, I will put below so I don't have to go into it. Uh, I don't think you'd go wrong with it. Uh, one of the, one issue I did have with it, uh, and this is a real, um, this is a real uh, shout out to Magna. So originally I could not get this, this unit to connect to Wi-Fi uh, again, no matter what I tried. And I knew I was doing it right. And I thought, you know, the first thing I was thinking is, I, is it possible I actually got another unit with a with a uh, broken Wi-Fi chip? Is that possible? And the answer is no. I mean, the chances of that happening from a separate company were like zero. So I knew something was going on that could, you know, either I was doing or there was something else going on. And so I was determined not to, you know, send this thing back. I was going to figure this out. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not uh, super savvy in this area. You know, I'm a scientist, but more in the biological sciences, uh, biochem and that kind of thing, but uh, electronics, no. Uh, so, but I was determined to figure out what was going on with this. And like a lot of things when it comes to do with uh, electronics, it was something dead simple, but getting to the bottom of what was dead simple was not so simple. And it took, God, it must have taken me all week to figure this out. So what it ended up being is this unit and, and other units uh, tend to use a uh, something called Ropey, and Ropey is a is a in between go to solution um, that is loaded up, and is how you configure is how you configure the unit. That's how you get it to get onto Wi Fi and a number of things like that. I believe it's pronounced Ropey, R O P I E E E, and you have to use Ropey to connect to uh, to configure the unit. And so um, all week long, I mean, I, I I was trying to get this thing on there. And Magna, to like say, to their credit, best computer, I'm oh, sorry, computers, I've already got computers in my head, best customer service uh, I've ever had, uh, as far as they were just not going to give up on, on me and on this unit to get this thing to work. And we had, um, we had Zoom calls, we had file sharing, we went back and forth. And like I say, I have to give them credit that, uh, you know, I was about to throw my hands up a couple of times, but I was like really determined to get this thing to work. And what it turned out to be was something as simple as could be. And that was the address, the internet address of my, uh, in my house, Ropey did not identify. It had a period on it, a dot, I kid you not. So however, the, the people at Ropey have um, designed, the, designed the unit uh, software wise, uh, you would just have, you have to be careful with uh, the name of your, um, uh, of setting it up of your Wi-Fi uh, address, and so once uh, I tried that, I mean, going back and forth, trying all the most you know complicated things, literally changing my Wi-Fi address to something else without a dot, voila, it worked, and it has worked great ever since. Rune picks it up and sees it every time I turn Rune on, and it has been has been great. But I will tell you, boy, oh boy, uh, as far as Rupee is concerned, Ropey, sorry, Ropey, whatever. If, if anybody's listening uh, at Ropey, uh, that's something that has to be fixed, or at least, um, at least, or at least companies that are using that uh, as their as their connection to set up their stuff might want to make it very clear that if you are trying to connect to Wi-Fi and you can't, uh, try changing the, your your Wi-Fi address and not using any symbols, I and mean, it doesn't say anything about that uh, in uh, Magnus or anybody else's. So. There's your shortcut. Um, so I, I would say, say if you're looking for a, a higher end uh, bridge streamer that sounds great, that is, as you can see, well engineered and well thought out. Um, it's also it's kind of a, a heavy little unit too. It actually weighs quite a bit for its size. I don't think you'd go wrong. Um, I'm not going to go into you know I didn't do like A/B comparisons between between this unit and anything else. Uh, I unfortunately I was sort of had to do them in succession as I would get one and send it back, but um, I, I, I'm quite happy with it, I think sound wise and configuration wise. Uh, I think that once you get it set up, depending on your system, it's one of the things that, you know, you'll set up really easily and be plug and play. And it could be one of those things where you end up like me and, and fighting with it. And maybe the thing I, the advice I just gave out might be the one thing that uh, uh, prevents you from, from having that issue. Uh, there's a lot of other companies out there that might make something a bit more uh, plug and play for less money. Um, but I think if you want, if you, if you've spent a, a lot of money on your system, on your main system, 
and you know you would like something as as that bridge streamer to your DAC that is uh, um, commensurate with with the rest of it, and you you know you don't really want to put a little aluminum box on there just because you don't want to. You know, again, I'm not going to debate whether they sound better or not. Uh, I think I, I definitely detect that the the Magna is just a very smooth, uh, um, neutral sounding unit. Uh, I, I think it makes the, the most of, of the DAC that's going through that Anthem. And um, I, I've put it through its paces now for a while. And I, I really feel that uh, it just complements the whole system really nicely on, on a number of fronts. Uh, again, both in sound quality, you know, of course, visual quality, build quality. And uh, I, I, I hold all of those things up to be important to me. And I think some people lie to either lie to themselves or pretend it doesn't matter to them how stuff, how stuff looks and, and build quality and engineering. You know, they'll just say, as long as it sounds good. And obviously the sound, the audio is the most important part. No one's going to deny that, but anybody that's going to say, I don't care how it looks. Uh, I don't care what it's built. Like, I don't care if it's in a milk cart, you know, with two, with two a coat hangers sticking out of it. Uh, I don't believe them. Uh, either they're lying to uh, themselves or they're lying to the rest of it. So, you know, I think that was the round the budget that I felt comfortable with. And I, I really felt that 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 was where I probably get the most uh, uh, bang for the buck quality wise. And, and there is a, especially in, in digital sources, there is a real hard diminishing return that kicks in uh, as far as any audible differences. Again, this could be debated a lot, but and I'm not claiming that price point is where it falls off. I tend to think that's about beyond that. You're you're really again just paying for, uh, you know, thick face plates and fancy dials and and all that. But you know, someone will argue with me that it's you know it's twice that much. Or many people I have to say also will argue that it's uh, it's a fraction of that. That you know, two a hundred dollar a hundred dollar you know uh, Raspberry Pi or a two hundred dollar whatever is, is diminishing returns and that there is no audible uh, improvements whatsoever. So as always, there there's some subjective opinions there. And I think there are, of course, objective testings that can be done by people a whole lot more qualified than I am. Uh, and they do. And I watch their channels too. And again, make my own sort of, you know, find that balance between um, what their objective measurements are, what I'm willing to pay, what I want in my system from a variety of, of, positions, meaning uh, build quality, visuals, and all that. And that was where, you know, for me, that was about what I what I was willing to, to go for. So, you know, your mileage may differ. And I think I think one thing that audiophiles are, I guess I'd like to say audio enthusiasts, because I, I consider myself an audio enthusiast, even though I've been into audio since I was literally like six, uh, five or six, when my father bought me a, 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 a little eight track uh, tape machine and gave and, and uh, Beatles uh, Lonely Hearts Club Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band was the first eight track that I got, and I still remember that. And I've been into audio, you know, pretty much that entire ever since. So that's my, I think, my uh, review, my thoughts on the Magna um, streamer. I, I think you would not go wrong with it. I think you could spend a whole lot more money and unlikely notice any audible differences. I would take a look at the tech information of what it contains because obviously I didn't do a very good job of that. I, I don't really, I think it's really boring when anybody can just go read what's in a unit to sit there and explain what's in the unit and all that. So I'd prefer to just give my opinions, my subjective uh, experiences with it and let people then say, you know, okay, he, he makes an argument that I, I should, uh, I should check it out and, and I'll, let me read up on it and see if, you know, if it's uh, makes sense to me. So obviously this uh, video was uh, brought to you by Alpha Joe as the little ticker says. Feels good, tastes good, and it's good for you. And I'll see you guys all on the Brink Zone.